On my last day in Kalara, Kham took me to the border of Iran, where I did some surveillance for the U.S. government. That was a joke. If you're in GA and you're watching this, that was a joke. <laughs> What an incredible three months of Arabic. Now I gotta be honest, not all of those three months were just fun and happiness. Like when I went to GA and then left Lebanon and had to figure out where I was gonna go and for the most part, it was an amazing three months of Arabic. So this video is a recap on the last three months of my life learning Arabic, all the places that I went, experiences that I had, and most importantly, this video is dedicated to all the amazing people that I met and new friends that I made. When I first got to Lebanon, I was so excited to be back in the country that I had lived in, I had studied in, country that I love, but I had forgotten just how hard it was to practice my Arabic. It had been several years since I had been in Beirut, so I decided to go out and explore. I went out and explored and vlogged the city, from Hamra to Bush Hamoud, and everywhere in between. Being the traveler and explorer I consider myself to be, I soon got restless staying in the same city, so I left, and I went north. My attempt at hitchhiking to Tripoli failed, but that's okay, because the sooner I got there, the sooner I met some really cool people. Once I got back to Beirut, I started planning my next trip to the south of Lebanon. My roommate Samar took me to the south, where we spent time with her family, and I filmed probably my favorite drone footage that I've ever filmed in my entire life. Check it out. After spending time in the south of Lebanon with Samar, I came back to Beirut, and then GA happened. It is currently 2.01 a.m. on Saturday, April 13th, and I have just had the worst day of my entire life. I'm sad to say that I'm leaving Lebanon. Only two weeks into RS-101 Lebanon, and I'm detained for an entire day. I'm shaken up, and that night, I book a one-way ticket to Paris, France. In Paris, I had to regroup, reassess, and figure out what I was gonna do next. What happened to me in Lebanon was an unfortunate case of the wrong place at the wrong time, but I wasn't gonna stop. I needed to keep moving. Once I made my decision, I booked a one-way train south to Italy, left my drone with my friend, and got on the next flight to Amman, Jordan. I spent the next month familiarizing myself with a new accent, exploring new places all around the country. I went all over Jordan, from the border of the Golan Heights, the Dead Sea, Irbid, all throughout the south, Wadi Rum. I found a cable park in Jordan. What if I can do a wake skating vlog for every language? Nat and I tried camping, but that just did not work out. It's 11.30 uh, p.m. and uh, we are just uh, sweating. I mean, at first we were gonna camp. Like in the tent, <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, oh, let's just go. Let's just go in the car, actually. And then we're like, yeah, we'll just we'll just sleep in the car. <laughs> and then 11:30, we're like, let's get the hell out of here. And so yeah, let's go uh, pack this tent up and get the hell out of here and go to Aqaba. <laughs> I did an extensive review on Petra for you guys. Don't get me wrong, it is absolutely incredible to be here and see this in real life. 100%, absolutely. But look at these crowds, man. All right, here we go. It's just it's two, two. We're gonna do this one. One, two, three. It's just too much. Don't make the same mistake I did. Watch that vlog. And then I decided to keep exploring, but this time outside of Jordan. I traveled all throughout Oman. Everyone should go to Oman. And then I crossed the border into Yemen. I was lucky enough to be able to spend the day with my friend Azam. Azam showed me all around health, and it was truly an experience of a lifetime being able to see the other side of Yemen, one of the most beautiful and tranquil places I've ever been in my life. And who could forget Somaliland? By far one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my life was exploring all of Somaliland with Khalid and his tour company. A link to his tour company is in the description. Check it out. I ate camel for the first time in my life, and I gotta say I was unimpressed by the hump and very impressed by the meat. Love camel. And who could possibly forget me ending my trip in Somaliland trying Chet for the first time. Side note, don't do drugs. It was certainly an experience I will never forget spending my last night in Somaliland, hanging out with locals, chewing chat, and talking politics. Visit Somaliland. It's an amazing place. I got back to Jordan, was prepared to switch my Airbnb and stay in Jordan for another month, and then this idea came to me. As loud and clear as it could have possibly been, go back to Lebanon. So I canceled my Airbnb and got on a flight the next morning back to Beirut. With only one month left of Arabic, I decided to make the most of my time in Lebanon. The best part about it was my good friend George was there to do the last month with me. We had some pretty awesome experiences. My first Lebanese wedding, which was insane. Kiki Eli, again, congratulations, you guys. Thank you for inviting me to your wedding. It was amazing. For me, one of the highlights of Ars 101 Arabic was going to Kurdistan. I was honored to speak at the University of Raparin, meet all the students, hang out with Ash, check out all of Rania. I love Rania. Don't tell anybody, but I think Rania is actually my favorite place in Kurdistan. After Rania, I went south to Suleimania, met up with my boy Barakhan. Barakhan took me all around. Barakhan re recommended getting the, the testicles, so I'm gonna try the testicles. Uh, it was a good recommendation. I'm glad I tried it, but 
I don't think I would order it again. Are you sure? No, he just said this in front of the camera. <laughs> and I got to learn about what he's doing and what his mission is. I posted a link in the description to all of Barakhan's info. Check out his Instagram, check out what he's doing. It's inspiring. From Suleimania, my contact, my guide, my friend Akam took me to Kalar, where I spent the next few days speaking at the English Access Institute, holding seminars there and meeting all of the students. On my last day in Kalar, Akam took me to the border of Iran, where I did some surveillance for the US government. That was a joke. If you're in GA and you're watching this, that was a joke. And from Kalar, I headed back up north to Rubil to meet up with my boys, Mr. Rubil, spend an entire day with them, filming, hanging out, uh, seeing the new Mr. Rubil gentleman's house. Again, if you don't know what the Mr. Rubil guys are up to, there's some info in the description on them. Check them out, they are doing some really cool things when it comes to fashion, environmental awareness, social change, all of it. After Kurdistan, I came back to Lebanon with only one week left. After three months of living in and traveling around the Arabic-speaking world, I gave my first interview in Arabic with Voice of Lebanon Radio. Thanks, Jesse. Three months learning Arabic, and then it was over. I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone that helped out with this vlog throughout these past three months. You know, all the friends that I made, everyone that was a part of this vlog over the past three months. Thank you all, all these amazing experiences and things that I did in Arabic that I learned. It was all because of you guys and your help, so. So thank you. Merci, shukran, mahad sinet, das khosh. You know, I ended RS 101 Arabic just days after celebrating Anthony Bourdain Day. Bourdain once said, if I'm an advocate for anything, it's to move as far as you can, as much as you can across the ocean, or simply across the river. The extent to which you can walk in someone else's shoes, or at least eat their food, it's a plus for everybody. Open your mind, get up off the couch, and move. Well, Lebanon, I'm gonna keep moving. I'll see you tomorrow. Buenoche, it's his